the shadow of the Tyranid race falls across the galaxy like a cloying shroud. Driven by an all-consuming imperative to feed, these horrific weaponized bioforms devour whole worlds in possibly vast swarms, leaving them as little more than barren rocks, devoid of all life. The galaxy is a dark and terrible place. Thousands of horrors lurk amongst the stars, yet none rival the sheer, unrelenting nightmare of the Tyranids. These ravenous aliens have no desire beyond the constant need to consume. Born through the endless expanse of space in colossal hive fleets, the Tyranids fall upon one world after another, devouring every scrap of organic matter and leaving nothing but desolation in their wake. To see the sky darken and bruise under their fell presence, scores of Tyranid bioships vomiting their locust-like swarms into the atmosphere is to know the terror of being nothing more than prey. None know the true origins of the Tyranids. Xenobiologists of the Imperium theorize that they hail from some incalculably distant quarter beyond the intergalactic void, that they have been drawn to this galaxy by the biomass, much like swarming insects are drawn to fields of crops. The Tyranid's single-minded need to consume at the expense of all else is unheard of by any other life form. But it is not the only horrifying aspect unique to these monsters. The coming of a Tyranid High Fleet is preceded by a smothering shroud of psychic nothingness that envelops entire star systems. Whole worlds go silent, their astropathic communications cut off by the shadow in the warp. Psychers caught within this field of psychic static risk losing their minds as the connection to the Imperium is overwhelmed by the hideous chittering of the Gestalt alien consciousness known as the Hive Mind. Even those who endure must use their powers sparingly and with great care, lest their psyches be torn to shreds. With astropathic communication choked off, the inhabitants of a prey world have little choice but to take up arms, fight until their last breath, and hope for a miracle. Upon encircling a world, a hive fleet disgorges wave after wave of weapon beasts into the atmosphere. Myotic spores by the million plunge through soaring flak fire, each bloated biopot stuffed full of beasts, ready to burst forth and slaughter all in their path. Hordes of termagants, hormagants, and flying gargoyles sweep across the planet, driven by the urging of the hive mind, coupled with their own instinct to hunt and kill. The prey pour fire into onrushing swarms from behind acid-scorched barricades, or else launch desperate offenses to cripple the leader beasts that act as coordinating nodes for the hive mind. But for every Tyranid slain, two more take its place. Their weapons spit burrowing grubs and digestive fluids that eat through armor and flesh, 
with horrific ease, and screaming soldiers are borne to the ground and sliced to pieces under scything claws. Where heavy resistance is encountered, hulking siege organisms such as the devastating Carnifex or the plasma-spitting Exocrine are deployed to smash enemy armor or fortifications into rubble. When the majority of the Prey World's forces have been slaughtered, the Tyranids begin the process of hunting down the last pockets of resistance. Blade Limbed lictors stalk the streets and under hives in search of victims, disguised by their chameleonic carapaces. Raveners burrow their way into the few remaining strongholds, falling upon the doomed occupants, hacking and slashing with vicious talons. Soon, the stain of the Tyranid Hunter organisms spread across the entire planet, and screaming survivors of the initial invasion are snatched from their hiding places and eviscerated. With all resistance destroyed, the Tyranids begin the process of consumption. Writhing tides of feeder organisms sweep across the planet, devouring every scrap of flesh and every drop of moisture. Nothing is left to waste, not even the ruptured remains of fallen tyranids. This accumulated biomatter is then turned into foul-smelling gruel, upon which the monstrous living ships of the Hive Fleet feed. Great digestion pools the size of lakes gape like cysts in the planet's surface, bubbling with virulent acids and digestive tyranid microorganisms. The biomass of the planet is vomited into these churning lakes by lumbering aerospexes. This is followed by the warrior beasts of the Tyranid swarms themselves, going willingly to their own annihilation that they might be reabsorbed by the hive mind as raw material for the next planetary invasion. Vile, mucus-like capillary towers burst from the writhing crusts of the planet, reaching high into the upper atmosphere where the waiting bioships latch on and suck all the lifeblood of the world away. When it has gorged itself fully, and every shred of biomatter has been assimilated, the high fleet finally departs, leaving nothing but a planetary shattered husk in its wake as it sets off in search of its next hunting ground. Entire sectors of space have been scoured in this manner as the turreted high fleets drift ever closer to the galactic core. Only by the most horrendous sacrifices can this doom be held back, and even the mightiest armies in the galaxy have been forced to their knees by the Tyranids' unrelenting advance. The Ultramarine's blessed home of Macrag was almost lost to the horror of High Fleet Behemoth. And, were it not for the heroic defiance of the Space Marines and their chapter master, Marianus Kalgar, the tendrils of the Tyranid menace may have choked the life from Segmentum. Ultima. Yet, despite similar displays of bravery on a thousand worlds, the High Fleet will not be halted. While the galaxy's inhabitants turn their eyes to the horrors emerging from the Great Rift, 
the tyrannid menace continues on its implacable course, utterly focused on the consumption of all life.